Hi, and welcome to Masterclass. I am Gatla Khomsomi. Criticism is often seen as negative and is a pill that most find hard to swallow. Why is this, and are there ways that we can channel the criticism we receive into something positive? Joining us today, Stephanie Vermeulen, author of Personal Intelligence, Future Fit Now, to help us navigate these muddy waters. Stephanie, welcome to the show once again. Hi, Katleko. Thank you again. I appreciate it. Always a pleasure. Stephanie, criticism. Yes. Why is it that this frustrates a lot of us all the time? Because I don't know about you, but I've never met a single soul that says, oh, I love criticism. Bring, <laughs> bring, on, bring it on. Bring it on. <laughs> there is a very interesting idea written by somebody who wrote a book called uh, Subliminal. Okay. And it's quite a popular bo uh, business book at the moment, Leonard Mlodinov. Mm -hmm. And he talks about that criticism is the most devious form we have as human beings of making ourselves feel better. That is so true. And that is, it's, it's so powerful sure. when one gets it yes. that all the time when I'm criticizing anybody else, I'm actually putting them down to so that me. I can look better. Uh -huh. So it's all about me and my insecurities. It's got nothing to do with what you're doing right and wrong. Mm. Now, the interesting thing with, we'll always find critics. There'll be plenty of people sitting right now criticizing you and I and uh, what we're saying. And that and, we're wearing orange and, together on and the And that we're the same <laughs> twins and all of that. <laughs> so the, you'll always find critics. They'll always be out there. Now, the interesting thing about neuroscience is neuroscience is now looking at how we're all wired up. Okay. And the way that our neurons or our brain cells are all wired up, we, we're all wired up just slightly differently. Mm. So that makes us unique. Now, there is nobody on the planet like you. Mm -hmm. There has never been anybody on the planet like you. Mm -hmm. And there never mm -hmm. will be anybody on the planet like you who right. is wired the same way as you are. Now, when we believe that things are absolutely right or absolutely wrong, that's what criticism suggests, that I know better or I know the rules. You clearly don't know the rules. That's mm -hmm. why I'm criticizing you, which really means you must do things my way. Sure. Now, why? Why should we always do things your way? Because when we're criticizing other people, we're actually handcuffing them to just being very ordinary yeah. and not being themselves. When you are your authentic self, you will be criticized as by people mm -hmm. as being slightly eccentric, perhaps maybe in Zulu we'd call it possibly a bit oyatlanya, <laughs> <laughs> you're a bit cuckoo. A little bit. <laughs> and because you're not the run of the mill following the rules type of person. Now in our world today, we've, we're living in this exhilarating disruptive revo uh, revolution. Yes. So if we all just keep doing things the way we learned them at school, for example, because school is where it starts, mm -hmm. you'll be criticized for your hair is too long, too short, or sorry, your skirt is too short, mm -hmm. and, or, <laughs> or whatever, all these stupid things, or yes. girls are still criticized in school for not being neat. Yes. What do you need to be neat for, for heaven's sake? Where does that get you? <laughs> so there's all these rules that are applied. Now, there are social rules that we agree to. Mm -hmm. In Johannesburg, most days of the week, we kind of agree to drive on the same side of the road for most of the day. Not all day, sometimes. but sometimes. <laughs> that. And that's quite handy, so we don't sort of kill each other yes. in, our, in our individuality. But those are the social rules that work, and we all agree to them. The sort of criticism that we're talking about is not social rules based, it's my rules based. Uh -huh. And it's the everyone knows. Now, I don't know about you, but I certainly didn't get a rule book about everyone knows. No. And if you do that, you literally are resigning yourself to leading a very mundane and ordinary life. So one has to then take the risk, okay, I'm going to do things that make me happy and work with my individuality because in my individuality and in your individuality, we have something very unique to offer. Mm. Now we can water that down with everybody else's criticism. It goes, no, you don't do it like that. You don't say it, you don't, it doesn't work like that. So-and-so's theory says it's not so. Then it's not. And it's now gone. Yeah. So if we take in other people's criticism, we literally are watering ourselves down and handcuffing ourselves to the mundane. If we want to make a difference and we want to make a difference our way, we literally have to ignore the critics. Yeah. And they will be there, but we need to know it's their stuff. So it's them trying to make themselves feel better. 
mm. rather than anything to do with me at all. I bet most of the people who criticize you probably don't know you very well. There may be some close people who do, yes. but it's none of their business to criticize you. Because if you can have a discussion, if they say, look, you're trading on my toes, it's a boundary issue, mm -hmm. that's a different thing. Then we can agree to actually go, all right, well, I didn't realize that I was doing that, so mm. I'll stop doing that with you. And it's knowing who we're dealing with also. So when it comes to close in, we negotiate those relationships. These are my terms, those are your terms. Okay, so we'll agree to do this or not do that. Mm. But that doesn't mean I have to change who I am to suit you, <laughs> because I can't do that. The cost is too great to me. It is, it, a lot of the times it is. But sometimes, Steph, do you not take some of that criticism and look at it and say, oh, well, maybe I have gone on the wrong path here, let yes. me try and fix this, but yes. not taking all the criticism up in its entirety. Yes. Now, that's where our emotions can be handy because our emotions are constantly giving us feedback. Okay. And that's why in my book, there's an emotional dictionary at the back of the book yes. so that one can actually work with your emotions. Okay. Now, if I am doing something and even if I, I'm criticizing myself heavily, mm. that isn't going to give me energy to be better at doing what I'm doing. It's just going to rob me of my energy, probably allow my self-doubt to creep in. By the time my self-doubt has crept in, no, I'm not going to do that project at all. That's way too terrifying. If other people are criticizing me and it hurts, then I go, oh, okay, maybe I do the same thing to myself. So we learn from our experiences rather than take on board other people's criticism. Mm -hmm. So other people are trying to make themselves feel better by putting your me down yes. or anybody else down. Yes. They're trying to make themselves feel better. They need to work with that if they're hypercritical. The problem is if you're hypercritical, it's because you're hypercritical of yourself. Of yourself. And so if you're very, very critical, which can go into the ide ideal, supposedly like perfectionism. Now, perfectionism works against us all the time because nothing is ever if perfect. If you're writing a book, when is a book finished? Yes. If you're painting a picture, when is a picture finished? If you're running a project, when is it finished? So if you're a perfectionist, it's never finished. It's never finished. Because it's no. never going to be perfect because there is no definition. Mm. So hypercritical people are usually hypercritical of themselves. That's why you will do it my way. And there is only what my way, only remember? Way. So we're destroying other people's creativity. We're destroying their input. And the, there's a whole new theory, also sort of a, a reasonably new theory, done based on a research project about leaders. And some are multipliers. They get more out of people because they allow people to come to their own solutions. Uh -huh. And others are the diminishers that literally get about half as much out of people. Because they criticize because so much. Because they criticize, you'll do it my way, it doesn't, it doesn't happen like that. How many times must I tell you? Well, that just absolutely diminishes or destroys people. So the impact of what we're doing is huge. It definitely and is. if we could stop being so critical of everything and everybody, then we could all live and let live, and we could all probably have a lot happier time, and we'd all be a lot more creative, because that's what it destroys, mm. is one's creativity. Lastly, Steph, if I do have a leader that is highly critical, what yes. tips would you have for me in ways in how I can deal with them and still have a civil relationship with them? The problem with having a highly critical anybody, particularly a leader, is we tend to take it personally. Yes. So just don't take any of it personally. Okay. And block it out by saying to yourself, that's his or her problem. They're trying to make themselves feel better. Nothing to do with me mm. at all. So if you can see it in the context of what it literally is, okay. then we don't need to take it personally. Okay. So we can go, okay, that person has got buttons that annoy them, bad buttons. We've got good buttons and bad buttons. Yes. That person, I'm pushing that person's bad buttons when I do that. Mm. So I'm getting a bad reaction out of that person. What good buttons can I push in this person without compromising myself? Uh -huh. Because if it's something that's important to you, you can't afford to compromise yourself because the more you compromise, the more literally depressed you become. Anger first and then depression after that. So when we are attached to people or married to people who are doing that to us, mm -hmm. that if we keep on compromising ourselves, that's where we land up with a long-term depression. After years and years and years and years and years of compromising yourself, rather than confronting your circumstance, that's where we're heading. So the price we pay is enormous if we keep on kowtowing to other people's criticisms, whether they are boss or whether they are partner or parents or families often. Mm -hmm. We compromise a lot to make other people happy. And it's the price we pay really is not worth it.
Sure, Steph, it's always worth it to have you on the show today. Thank you so much for joining us. Thank you. And I love us in our orange. Absolutely, I'd be <laughs> fabulous. <laughs> always. Thank you, Steph. Thank you. And that was Stephanie Vermeulen, author of Personal Intelligence, Future Fit Now, to help us navigate through criticism. Thank you for joining us. Until next time, goodbye.